I'd like to review a few points about tensors. So we defined a tensor last time in a couple different ways, but I'd like to look at this one definition that I have here, where I write, if I consider a tensor f of n vector arguments, then I get a n real number. And so we're going to call this an nth order tensor if and only if f is linear in each argument. And what I mean by that is that if I take f, and I apply it to a linear combination of two vectors. So I have a scalar alpha here and a scalar beta there. And each of those multiplies two vectors, so in this case v and w, and I add them together. So that's a linear combination. Then the result needs to be the scalar alpha times, or times f acting on the vector v. And then f distributes over this addition here. And so I get that plus beta f acting on w. So we'd often call this a multilinear operator. So it's linear in each argument. So that's why it's multi. So it's not just in one argument, it's in multiple arguments. Um, the, the, the first sort of simple tensor that we looked at was the dyadic product. And so that dyadic product was generated using two vectors, let's say a and b, and this was the, this is one notation, or the other notation, which is a bit more common, is a outer product b. Okay, we're going to go ahead and we're going to stick with this first notation because that's what Dr. Slaughter uses in his book, and that the way we defined this originally is we said a, b, and I'll put a square bracket here just to remind ourselves these are grouped together, acting on a vector v, is defined to be the number b dot v, so that's just a number when I take that job product, times the first vector a. Okay, So that's the definition. In, in terms of this other notation, the multilinear operator notation, I would say I would say I've defined a b by its action on two vectors, let's say v and w, and this def is defined as a dotted with v times b dotted with w. So a dot v is a number, and b dot w is a number, and I just multiply those together, and that's the consistent definition. And the good thing about this second definition is it extends naturally to multiple dyadic products. So if, suppose I have a triple dyadic product, a, b, c, and I can ask, well, what is that when it acts on v, w, and x, so three vectors, and the natural extension definition of this is that I take all the mutual dot products. So I'll have a dot v, that's a number, times b dot w, which is a number, times c dot x. So I just have the product of these three dot products as the definition of the triple dyadic product. Um, often, we, when we work with these higher order tensors, we, we don't act, they don't act upon the same number of vectors as uh, the order of the tensor. And, so, and that, that's OK. And so the way to understand that is, suppose I have a, b acting on just one vector. So I'll leave the first argument open. And I, the way you do this is you just apply the rule in the arguments that you have something, and then in the arguments where you don't have anything, you just leave it alone. So this, what this means is b dot v, which is a number, times the vector a. Uh, the alternate way of writing this would be to say a b dot v. So you'll see that often, and, and that kind of makes sense that way. Uh, we can do the same thing with a third order tensor. Let's say a, b, c, and suppose that only acts on one vector v. Then we have c dotted with v, which is a number, and then a and b we just live alone. Okay. So now what I have here is I have a number and then I have a dyadic product. So this is a second order tensor. So if I take a third order tensor, apply it to a vector, I end up with a second order tensor. Uh, the alternate way of writing this would be a, b, c dotted with v. So you can see how that kind of makes some sort of consistent sense there. Um, so the dyadic product is a very simple tensor, but uh, let's go ahead and look at what happens if we try and utilize this notational convention here and on a bona fide second order tensor. So let's, let me look at the tensor F, second order, acting on two vectors V and W. Let's see what we can learn by expanding our definition. So let me first 
expand VE, I'll write that as VI EI hat, and I'll write W as WJ EJ hat. Okay. Now, F is multilinear, and so that says that I can bring any, out any scalar multipliers out in front of F, and I can do that in any argument here. So, so I can write this if I want as VI WJ F acting on EI hat EJ hat. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to define this number. So F acting on two vectors as number. I'll call that F I J. And these are the components. We'll call them the components of F. So what I have in the end here then is F I J V I W J. Okay. Now I'm going to play a couple of tricks. I have a contraction on I and a contraction on J. And so the contraction on A, I, I'm going to rewrite. I'm going to have FIJ delta IK VK WJ. So I've broken up the summation on the I's and written it in terms of this delta IK. But if you look at this, I'm only going to get something when I equals K. So the two lines are exactly the same. And I can do the same thing with the summation on J. I can write this as Fij delta Ik delta Jl Vk Wl. Okay? And now I'm going to make the observation that the Kronecker delta delta Ik, I can write that as Ei hat dot Ek hat. And I can do the same thing with the delta Jl. I can write that in terms of Ej hat dotted with El hat. So I have F I J E I hat dot E K hat E J hat dotted with E L hat V K W L. Well, if I look at this now, I have all these dot products, and that's just between vectors, as, as though I had a dyadic product acting on two different vectors. So I can rearrange this a little bit. I can write this as EIJ, EI hat, EJ hat, so that's a dyadic product there, times, or acting on, VK, EK hat, WL, EL hat. So, now if I compare this to what I started with at the very top here, I had F acting on VW, and here I have, that's just V, and here I just have W. So now I can make the identification here that what's in the square brackets here is just F. So I can write F as equal to its components acting on EI hat, EJ hat. So it's just an alternate way of writing out F, this time directly in terms of its components. It's very similar to the fact that I can write V in terms of its components, VK, EK hat. Okay, so I can do the same thing with second order tensors. And this extends nicely to higher order tensors too. So for instance, if I want the components of a third order tensor, say A, I apply it to three basis vectors. And this will give me its components A, I, J, K. And alternately, I can write A in terms of the components and the basis vectors directly. And I'll have a triple scale or dyadic product, E, I, J, K. So this is just another way of writing and it's rather useful. Okay, so let me, uh, there's one last thing that I'd like to review and that's something known as double contraction. And so, suppose I have a third order tensor A double contracted with a second order tensor. And let me just define what I mean by this. First, let me expand this. Double contracted on F, so LM. I have to keep choosing new indices so I don't triple them up. And so what I mean by this is that I'm going to apply this third order tensor individually on the uh, vectors here that make up the dyadic product defining F. So I'm going to end up 
I'm going to contract those guys there, or dot product them, and take the dot product there. So if I do that, I'll have a i j k e i, and then e j hat e l hat is going to give me delta j l, and then the e k hat dotted with e m hat is going to give me the delta k m. So this is the definition of this notation here, l m. Let's just make this a little clearer here. That was an e i hat. Okay, and now I have this. JL here, there's an L there, so I can replace L by J. And I have a delta KM, so I can replace this M here by a K. So I can write this as A I J K F J K E I hat. And this is just simply what I mean by or define to be double contraction. So really basically, and it's called double contraction because I'm contracting two indices, I'm contracting the last two indices of A, the J and the K, with the two indices that are right next to it, the J and the K and the F.